words of world heavyweight boxing champ Jack Johnson, don't let your dreams be just dreams. No matter your age or where you come from, these are important and inspirational words to live by. And our next guest is living his life with no regrets and turning all of his dreams into reality. You've seen him on shows including HBO's miniseries, The Undoing, Limitless, and The Watcher. But his talents aren't just reserved for his incredible acting skills. Let him rest. Heaven blessed. Bring him home. Bring him home. Bring him home. Now that is a powerful voice. Michael Devine is an actor, musician, and he is a third generation police officer with an inspiring journey. He's also become a big name in, to watch in Hollywood and really just across the land. Michael Devine, welcome to New York Living. Oh, well, thank you. This welcome, is awesome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. This is great. Listen, I, I, am, I am at a loss for words already, right? and we ain't even got uh, started yet. <laughs> that voice. Yeah. My thank goodness. you. So, so raised in Jersey. Yes. And I have to ask, okay, pork roll or Taylor Ham? Settle it, just settle it, <laughs> well, just do it. Well, raised in New Jersey, so it, it was Taylor Ham. Obvi. Of course, okay. but then I, when I was a cop, I was in Long Island. Oh. So I was very confused, but now I'm back in Jersey, so it's Taylor Ham. It's still Taylor <laughs> Ham. Yeah. Taylor Ham for the win. For the, <laughs> for for the, the win. For yeah. the win. I'm a New Yorker, and even I know that it's Taylor Ham. Yeah. It's not, it's nothing else. Um, I've never had either. So I've never I had need, either. I need, if you, if I had to pick one to start off with, yes, we'll start off with Taylor Ham. Oh, Taylor Ham, yeah, yeah okay. for sure. Right. Pork roll doesn't even sound very. Nice. It sounds. Okay. It's, you know what? If we're being honest, it sounds hideous. Yeah. So let's call it Taylor Ham. <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to that clip. Uh, who taught you how to sing, sir? Well, you know, uh, growing up in New Jersey, I was very close to Broadway. And I was obsessed with Les Miserables. Mm -hmm. Like the original, when Les Miserables started, it was like nothing else. And I waited outside the stage door and I asked the actors, do you teach voice? No. You, excuse me, do you teach voice? And one of them said, yes, I teach voice. Ed Dixon, the master of the house, he was my first voice teacher. What? And in fact, all of my voice teachers have been in Les Miserables. Stop before. it right now. Yeah. So you, it was just a cold... I'm just going to shoot my shot. And I had a lot of guts as a young kid. <laughs> Surprised. Ooh, I feel like that's what it takes. Yeah. And, you know, it, it definitely works. It yeah. beyond works. Okay. And and not just singing. I'm hearing that you are uh, third generation. Right. Third. And I have to ask, NYPD, how did, how did that come about and, you know, keeping it in the family? It was very strange because I didn't intend to be a cop at all. I mm -hmm. went to school for acting and I was, I was singing, I was acting, and that was my destination. And then something happened. And it sounds a little corny, but I, I got a higher call. And it wasn't my family pushing me in that direction. Okay. In fact, they were as shocked as I was. Yeah. And then at 26, I left uh, a tour of a musical and, uh, and entered the NYPD. I was 26, I said, let me give it till I'm 30. And I gave it 22 years. 22 years wow. dedicated to becoming one of New York's finest. You followed in your father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, he died in the line of duty. How did that affect your trajectory? Um, did it allow you to pivot, reflect? How did it oh, impact you overall? Well, for one, I was... You know, the world is so divided on law enforcement right now, but I was able to see, you know, law enforcement from a very altruistic, um, I was able to see the level of sacrifice from, from home. And he was one, I'm sorry, I was one when he was shot, and then he lived in a wheelchair for 10 years. So I did get 10 more years with him. And my brother wanted to be a cop and follow in his footsteps immediately, and I kind of shied away from it. And perhaps it's something for my therapist, but there, there <laughs> might have been something in there that informed my decision. And my molecular chemistry forcing mm -hmm. me in that direction, pulling yeah. me in that direction. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you loved it. You loved every minute of it. Not every minute. <laughs> but the highs, yeah. extreme highs and lows. But it it, 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 it was worth it. Well, we took a deep dive into your Instagram. Yeah, we did some stalking, sir. Mm. Mm -hmm. What's happening in this picture? That we have a picture of you making an arrest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if this isn't oh. New York City. 
I don't. Oh. Do, is that Joaquin Phoenix? What's happening? Is this? No, it? that's real. That's that's real. I wish it was. I wish that was one of my movie sets. But no. Oh, um, I was 1999. I was a rookie cop in the mean streets of Times Square. Oh boy. And I arrest. Oh, there's another one. I, arrest, oh. I arrested that poor clown. I can't tell you what he was doing. I, I'll just say he was clowning around. But a, a famous <laughs> New York photographer. Um, I forgot his name. I wish I remembered his name. Okay. Titan New York Tiger or something. He took that photo, and it's it's lived in infamy on T-shirts and posters. And actually, when I retired, he presented me with that. Is that, that, that right? Picture. Yeah. Is that right? Oh my gosh, I love it. I also love the the old cop car. So it's do cool, I. Right? And it even really the the old the, the whole whole backdrop there. Yeah, Times Square. It's Times Square. She's Detroit. changed a little bit. Yeah. Times Square. Uh, <laughs> uh, a lot though. of it, and not a scene from a movie there, obviously. No. But no. you know, uh, we've we've heard lots of films, mm -hmm. TV. In addition to, you know, 22 years in service and y your musical geniusness, it's like oh, no word. <laughs> Can we talk a little bit about that? Well, I, I, I wanted to find a way to kind of merge the trajectories. And I actually became, around 2002, I became one of the soloists for the ceremonial unit. We have a ceremonial mm -hmm, unit. Yeah. So I was singing the national anthem and things like that. It was a good way to kind of channel my creative energy. And then I actually put it all into an album, a very melancholy album of just songs from vigils and memorials. <laughs> Hopefully some were inspirational, and it did surprisingly well. So I wanted to maybe refocus and find the next album. Yeah. Then I had a couple, I don't know, a couple more challenges along the sure. way. So it took 10 years to get to today where That's it came out. Hey, listen, 10 years is worth it, I would think, right? Yes. Nothing that we really love in life comes easily, at least it hasn't for me. No. Yeah. So what is the name of the new album, by the way, it drops today? today? Today. It's called Sentinels. Sentinels. Very interesting title. What is that about? It has a, a couple of different meanings. One, there's a little nod to the New York City Police Department, perhaps, mm -hmm. as the Sentinels of New York City. But there was, there was one day I was looking up and I saw these architecture in New York, the, <coughs> gargo the gargoyles and the statues, and I thought, God, the stories they must be able right. to tell. And so these songs kind of represent what those stories might be. Interesting. I once walked with my boys when they were very little, and I, I asked them, to, as we were walking, as they were, oh, Mommy, I'm bored, I'm hot. I said, look for the gargoyles. <laughs> and I entertained them for mm -hmm. maybe five minutes. Good but idea. <laughs> yeah. it was, that is a very interesting perspective, if only we knew what they were saying. So, so uh, 10 years in the making, is it everything that you wanted it to be and hoped it would be? And how is it different from that first one? Because you said the first album was, was rather melancholy. It was, and I, I made a conscious effort to make this a bit more uplifting. Yeah. And uh, so I like to think that it is. And I also made it a bit bigger because, you know, I wanted this, this I thought for a moment this could be my swan song, so I wanted it to be. Not the swan <laughs> song. You never know. You're just getting started, sir. You never sir. know. I, <laughs> ten, ten years was, I don't know if I could do this again, but. <laughs> I wanted this to be epic, and I wanted it to be good, and it, it is exactly where I was. The benefit of 10 years, there's there's nothing I would change because I've had plenty of time to make those changes if I wanted it. Yeah, I, I love to hear that, uh, especially because we are, you know, uh, where I've learned today that uh, a diagnosis has come for you. That's um, right. Right, like many 9-11 first responders, mm -hmm. there's everything from minor afflictions, which I consider myself. I have something called Barrett's esophagus, which ranges everything from acid reflux to blood on my pillow in the mornings. Um, but I'm still, I think, I'm very lucky compared to a lot of my colleagues who are battling catastrophic illness. Sure. And yeah. the numbers, uh, the death toll keeps rising, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So this is really, I, I consider myself very lucky. But as a singer, it presented a couple challenges. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I meant when I thought maybe this could be my swan song. I, I'm keeping hope alive for you, yeah. Thank Michael. You. And you have it under control right now. Excellent. The right medication and, and lifestyle changes, I have it under control. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on all the things. Yes, well, yes. thank you. Thank Especially you both. the album drop. Are you going to have a, a party, a release party? No, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> I am not mad at that, okay? <laughs> this is my Good type of man there. All right. For you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank, on thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. Love it, love it. Be sure to stream Michael's new album, Sentinels, today, wherever you stream your music.